Hey guys, this is Cora to the rescue and this is part two of the sneaker bot tutorial. Now, if you're looking to cop those wonderful Yeezys or learn Python programming or develop projects to learn web scraping or browser automation, you've come to the right place. And this is where we left off in the part one video. Just to recap, what we do is we select a product and this is the product page so we want to generate this url for that we call a function called url gen product where i'm passing in the name of the shoe and the model number and it's going to generate the url let's try and run this and here we go so we have the url of the product next we want to see what sizes are available because say for instance 5.5 is out of stock and I try to run my code on that it's gonna give me an error and maybe we're not able to cop the shoe so basically to do that I need to write a check stock function and let me uncomment that out so before we get started on the check stock function we need to install some dependencies so I'm just gonna to go to my terminal and uh, for those of you who haven't seen my video on how to set up PyCharm, install Python and install Brew, please go and do that. Once you have that running, it's going to be a really easy task for us. So to install Selenium, we just need to run this command called pip install Selenium. It's going to run and you will have Selenium installed. Next, we installed Homebrew in the previous video and we're going to utilize that to install Chrome WebDriver. So I do run this command called brew tap cask room cask once this finishes running i'm gonna run brew cask install chrome driver and voila chrome driver is gonna get installed now we need to import some stuff into our project so we write these import statements from selenium import web driver and then a bunch of other imports and once we have that most of the admin stuff is done and we can hop on to writing the check stock function so diving in here i need to have the url returned to me once i call it so i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna return the url from here so basically just instead of printing the url i'm gonna have it returned to me in a variable called url and then i'm gonna call the check stock function pass in the url from here and the model number from here and this function is gonna call and run so the first statement we have here is driver is equal to webdriver.getChrome and what this does is basically initializing the chrome web driver which is essentially opening up chrome like this now we just don't want to open an empty window we need to open a specific url and uh, we pass in the url called my url and basically this page gets open which is the product page till now what we have we call url gen product with the product name and the model number it goes here it generates the url it returns it from here which we store in a variable called url then we call check stock and we send the url from here and the model number it goes here and then we're initializing chrome web driver and opening this url in the browser good next what i want to do is if i inspect now to inspect you can click f12 on windows or you can double right click and go to inspect on a mac and uh, here what i want to do is i'm going to click on this little arrow thing and i'm going to click on this form so basically this is a form and how i can identify it from code is through its class name and the class name is called add to bag da 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 so basically what I do here is that I say wait for the presence of this element how I'm going to identify the element by its class name and the class name is add to bag form 22702. Now what if something happens and the page is not loading then our program would be stuck indefinitely. So I need to add a timer and I put in 10 seconds here. So essentially what this statement does 
sets a time max of 10 seconds and waits for the element identified to load. So basically we are waiting for this form to appear. Good. Now once we have this form loaded, what I do is find element by class name and I say gl drop down select element for more those of you wondering where I got this from. I need to click on this select size button and then it's going to give me a drop down and then I'm going to get all the sizes. So basically inspect this button and it the class name is gl drop down select element. So I'm going to go here. I say okay driver dot find element by class name gl drop down select element. We already made sure that this element is loaded because we waited for its parent which is the form. which is the form and here is the form. So we waited for this form to load and then we can make sure that we have these sizes available. And we say that driver.find element by class name, gl dropdown select element, which is the class name. And we store it in a variable called username. Next, what we have is all of this data. What we essentially want to do is we want to go through all these option values and store it in a list. So basically in a list we have the numbers 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5 and we're going to display it to the user. How we do that is basically I say options is equal to find element by tag name. So if you look here there are tags called option, option, option. So I'm waiting, I'm getting all these tags into a variable called options and then I'm looping which is I'm going through them one by one and I'm looking at the inner HTML which is these numbers and then I'm storing it in a list. So I have an empty list initialized here. I have all these options in a variable called options and I'm looping through each one of them and appending it into a list. Basically this list now contains all the numbers which is 5, 5.5, 6, 7, 7.5, whatever. Option get attribute in our HTML gets all the numbers and then we're adding it to a list. So by the end of this, we have a list with sizes. Now, if we carefully look here, we have this option value as well, which doesn't have any number. It's just empty. So even this would show up to the user and the user would be like, what the hell is this? So to prevent that, I write this condition. I say if size, if sizes is digit, which means that I'm looping through all the all the all the sizes stored in the list, and if it is a digit, then I'm gonna print out that oh this size is available. Else, I'm just gonna do nothing. So basically, printing only if size in the list is a digit. Essentially what we're doing here is basically we identify this element by its class name then we add all of these options into a variable called options then we're looping or going through all of these options one by one and I'm adding the inner HTML which is these numbers to a list. In the end I have all the sizes and then I have this empty tag as well I am going through all these numbers again and I'm printing size only if it is a digit else I'm not doing anything. I have this in a trike finally block. So the finally block always executes when this function is called. Why, why, we, why I didn't just put it like you know like this is because suppose I get an error here instead of the program crashing it's going to go to the finally block and just quit the driver so that is why the finally block is there essentially next what we need to do is let's just try running this code once it 
and voila we have all the sizes available here now we need to take the user input so i say size is equal to integer and i take the user input saying please enter size and why i have this integer over here is because when we take an input it is taken as a string and i want to typecast it as an integer and now instead of passing in a hard coded size of five i'm gonna pass size over here and let's try and run this Now I enter size say six and I get this URL. I go here and I see that the size is selected. So basically this ensures that the size we're selecting is available and we're not selecting an invalid size. So guys, this is essentially the check stock function. Next, what we need to do is we need to add it to bag and onwards functionality and check out from here and how we're going to do that you'll have to wait till my next video or part three thank you so much for watching please comment if you had any problems and i would be surely helping you with that if you guys find a better way to do things do comment that out too once again guys thank you so much for watching take care goodbye